The mode is the number that occurs the most. So it's the most frequently occurring value or values. It is possible to have more than one mode. If there's a tie for whichever one happens the most, there can be more than one mode. It's also possible for there to be no mode. If, if none of the values repeat, then there is no mode. Um, one extra thing with median, if you have an even number of data values and you count into the middle, if the median happens between two data values, you find the mean of those two data values to find that middle point between them. Range. Range measures how spread out the data is, and range is the largest number minus the smallest number. Mean, median, and mode are ways to measure the center of the data. Range and standard deviation are ways to measure the spread of the data. So for both range and standard deviation, the greater the number, the more spread out the data is. Have any of you heard of standard deviation before? Heard of it, but don't really know what it is? Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to use example, or data set A as an example. If I look at data set A, I can calculate the mean. The mean is 3.5. I'm going to look at how far away from the mean each of these data values are. So how far is 2 away from 3.5? If you looked at them on a number line. 1.5. And if you can't figure that out, do th 2 minus 3.5 and then ignore the negative. So 1.5. The next one is 1.5 units away from the mean. 3 is 0.5 units away from the mean. The second 3 is... 0.5 units away from the mean. 4 and 4 are both 0.5 units away from the mean. And how far are 5 and 5 from the mean? 1.5 and 1.5. So these are all of the distances from each data value to the mean. The standard deviation is the average of those distances. So take the distance that each number is from the mean, add them up, and divide by the number of numbers. This ends up equaling 1. So the standard deviation for this data set is 1. The larger the number is, the more spread out the data is. Do you see how data set A is not very spread out at all? So take a look at these four data sets. Which one do you think would have the largest standard deviation? I think the mean is what, like nine? Or is it 11? But 2 and 20 are both very, very far away from whatever that middle point would be. So if your data values are really spread out away from that middle point, it is going to affect your standard deviation and make it a bigger number. I believe the standard deviation for C is actually like eight or nine. I forget what it was, I calculated it earlier, but it is much larger. So notice that A, B, and D are all very, very clustered around the middle number. C is much more spread out. So I'm gonna write down more spread out. <clears throat> The ACT likes to throw some things at you to try to shake your confidence. So they'll give you a question about standard deviation thinking, oh, they don't know this term, it's gonna throw them off and they're not gonna know how to do this problem. But if you know that standard deviation is kind of like range and it measures how spread out the data is, you could guess this question and probably get it correct. All right, are you ready for matrices? <clears throat> Again, 
the ACT has started to throw matrices on their tests. Matrices is the plural of matrix because we don't want to say matrixes because that's just a tongue twister. So matrices is the plural of matrix. Matrix operations are actually really simple. And the way that the ACT test does this, they throw a question on that's actually really simple, but because you've never seen it before, oh my gosh, what is this thing? I don't know how to do it. And then you skip it, you guess, whatever. So matrix addition is very, very simple. I'm going to do the first two, and I'll bet you can figure out what I'm doing. How did I get negative three and zero? Two plus negative five is negative three. Three plus negative three is zero. So what's my second row going to look like? Five plus five is 10. And then the last one, negative one plus four is three. How's that for simple? Now here's what the ACT might do. They would give you this fully done matrix problem, but instead they might have an X in place of the five and a Y in place of the four. And then they would ask you something like, what is X plus Y? Well, if you understand what's going on with the matrix addition, you could be like, okay, five plus X gives me 10, so X must be five. Negative one plus y gives me three, so y must be four. Five plus four is nine, so my answer would be nine. <clears throat> Scalar matrix multiplication is basically a beefed up distributive property. So what do you think we're gonna do with that two that's outside of the matrix? We're gonna multiply everything in the matrix by two. So two times three is six. Two times negative one is negative two. Two times four is eight. And two times two is four. <clears throat> okay, turn in your packet to the very back. We're gonna look at number 17 together. <clears throat> Number 17, this is from an actual ACT test. Given that A times this matrix equals this other matrix, what is X plus Z? Well, find something that's done, like use A and six and 27. A times six has to equal 27. Could you then figure out what A is? divide by six, and you'd figure out what A is. So then you would do that number times two to figure out what X is, and that number times four to figure out what Z is, and then add that X and Z value together. So if you understand scalar multiplication, this looks like a super complex problem. It's really not that bad. You can probably get the answer to this in under 30 seconds, which is really good on the ACT. Okay, flip back to the front and let's do matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is the more complicated of the matrix operations, but I wanna show you how it's really not that bad. In matrix multiplication, you multiply the rows from the first matrix with the columns from the second matrix. So to get this number, I need to multiply two and three times negative one and seven. And here's how we do this. We do the first number in the row times the first number in the column. What is two times negative one? Negative two. Then you do the second number in the row times the second number in the column. What is three times seven? Add those two numbers together. What is negative two plus 21? That's the first number in your answer matrix. I did two times negative one to get two, 
and then I did 3 times 7 to get 21, and then added them together. So first term, first term, multiply, second term, second term, multiply, add them together. And you always do row with column. So then the next number in my answer matrix is going to be the bottom row times this column. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 5 times 7 is 35. Add those together. That number is 31. OK, so ACT trick, do you have to do the whole problem? No, if you know how to get this first number, you probably have enough information to answer the problem. So turn to the very back of the packet, and let's try the last problem. <clears throat> Which of the following matrices is equal to the matrix product that thing times that thing? Well, if you know that matrix multiplication is supposed to be rows times columns, 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. What do you get when you add 4 and 5 together? 9. So which matrix has to be the answer? E, the only one that has 9 in it. So you can probably get that answer in like 10 seconds. And that's huge on the ACT. If you can get one whole question done in 10 seconds instead of a minute or two, and the really awesome thing is that matrix problems usually fall in the last 10 to 20 questions of the test. They are considered some of the harder questions. So those are the questions where if you can get any of those right, it's like bonus.